with 3D printing and technology. So for today's video, I'm going to be taking the Spark Maker SLA 3D printer apart. This is the 3D printer that you could buy on Kickstarter or Indiegogo, which I think is still available on it, but they also have their own website they're selling it through. The big selling point was that it was an affordable SLA 3D printer, which it is. But as you probably read some of the reviews on it, it's not the best one. That's a lot of technical issues. But the main reason I'm taking mine apart is one, so I can see if I can replace the replace or upgrade the bad power input jack, and two to see what type of circuit boards in it because they've recently released an upgrade for the Spark Maker. It's called the Spark Maker. FH, FHD kit because they're going to release a second spark maker an upgrade one upgraded one and an upgrade kit so we'll see if mine's the first spark maker or if it's the second one so here's the spark maker I have the lid on mine and I got it in this tub because it mine apparently leaked maybe touched it or moved it but yeah so that's in the tub so first thing, I'll unplug the power cable, so it's already been unplugged, but it would go here if I had it still in here. So first, I'm going to take the spark maker out of the tub and clean it up a little bit, because there's still some reds in the rough taper. Okay, so now I got wrapped down some, it's not 100% sticky free, but it's good enough, so I'm going to take the top red off. So to the side, this is the main component. So if you don't know how it works, it has one Z-axis that raises this part from up and down, which is the print bed underneath of it. This piece is the resin tank. As it raises up, a UV light in here hardens each layer by layer, creating an object. And this button is the power button and selector SD card reader and the power deck's on the back. So first thing you can take off is the print bed because it comes disassembled in the box. So unscrew this. Set off to the side. It should slide out. There's the print bed. And here's the resin tank. So, on the z-axis you can see we have a gear cup running right here. So the first thing is you can probably take this piece off, the resin tank holder, with an allen wrench. And I'm guessing you can probably take it off from the top side since there's more allen wrench screws right here. But I don't think you can get all the way off the z-axis. And there's a few screws on the bottom down here. I think that holds the z-axis onto it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take the resin tank off. So I unscrewed one. Took a, little, took a little while. But that's the size of it. So now i got one, two, three, four, five. Or even more to go. So see you guys in a few minutes. Okay, so I got these three on this side took off, and these three on this side undone. So I was doing the last one, but coming to race, apparently it's just those six that's holding it onto it. So we got the looks like UV cable going to it. That's the UV backlight. This is obviously the UV backlight. Then this is some cable going to a screen. I guess some kind of sensor piece. So inside we can see a step motor. The camera focus. Be right here. That controls the Z axis. And it looks like these screws I thought was part of the resin tank. Well, these are the ones underneath the resin tank. I think these hold the top together. 
And it looks like below it we got the main circuit board. So the next step would be to get the Z-axis off. Because I don't think I can get the lid off without taking the Z-axis off. So it looks like this piece has a hole cut out for the rod to go through. And I think I can fit the gear coupling through this hole as well. That piece should be fine. But I think I need to take this back piece off. I'm going to start with these bottom two screws. And then work my way up. These two screws, these screws are not the same size. They are smaller size. So we need two Allen wrenches so far to take the spark maker apart. So the first screw for the outside pieces were this size. And this is the size of the screw for the Z-axis cover. So taking the two bottom screws out. This is obviously just a cover for it. And it's not holding it on so I think I'm going to take the bottom ones out. So these are the three screws that's on the bottom. Here's a test comparison with the resin tank screw. These are used with the bigger Allen wrench. But this is not moving. I'm thinking the only thing I got to do is take the top screws off. I hope it comes out somehow. Okay, so these top screws all use the small Allen wrench. And these two screws specifically hold this button in place. Okay, so now that I got this side loosened, I was wrong about it being connected underneath of the... It looks like it's just one piece. So I'm going to pinch the other side up, then take the top off. So, that piece does come off like that, so... This orange cable that holds the EB screen sensor thing in place. So it's keeping it from coming completely off. But here we can see the main circuit board. And there's resin inside the tank. But we got the power jack here. The control knob piece here. Some routers going up to the Z-axis. And it's like the main clip right here. If you can see that, but it says spark maker on it. So I'm going to spend a few more minutes trying to get this orange cable undone. So I took this, ended up taking the six screws out to get the circuit board out. And you can see it has a fan down here too. So this is what it looks like pretty disassembled. I'm going to get out this ribbon ripped, so I have to replace that. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Here's the heat sink. And the three screws on the bottom do hold the Z-axis in place. And I also found that there's four calm screw hold things that hold the top in place. The other two hold the heat sink in place. One other thing that I've noticed was that the screws holding the resin tank together and the screws holding the resin tank to the body is a different size. The middle one is long, a little bit longer than the resin tank holder. So now I'm going to assemble all back together and then hope I can get one of these cables again. But that's going to do it for today's video. If you like this video or want to see the latest videos first, make sure to click subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.